Hello and welcome to ClimbingAlbers.com. My name is Dan Holiday, and in this video we're going to break down this video. Um, luckily, we can break it down because you know everybody got out unscathed. There was no major injuries, uh, no fatalities, no nothing. So we can kind of laugh at this, but also use it as like um, a case study, an example of what not to do. There are so many things that are done in this video that could have helped prevent what happened and just hilarious like the back and forth in the video um just ridiculous so let's start off first thing they've got a pull line in in the tree and they're pulling it i don't know if they're pulling it by hand pulling it with a mechanical advantage or pulling it with a bit of machinery but they're pulling it so hard that as soon as the guys as soon as the top starts to go and the guy's kind of hinge starts to it starts to pivot on the hinge it fires the trunk back because it it been pulled so far to the left and then as soon as the top starts to go it fires him back to the right and that starts like the 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 wobbling of the trunk and that's basically like what wobbles him off off of his spurs um the next thing is you'll see he slides all the way down the trunk and anybody who's done any kind of um, basic climbing training, has been to college, has done any kind of climbing course, has been shown basic um, spur techniques, will know that you should always use a cinching tying system, which I'll explain a bit more in detail in a minute. So he doesn't have a cinching tying system. It doesn't look like he's got two points of attachment is only on a, a lanyard which i presume is probably still called lanyard which means it keeps its its shape its rigidity meaning is more likely to slide down the trunk as he does um and then so let's play let's play this so he goes down and then the guy says I told you that was going to happen. Like He checks with him first that he's all right, and he says yes, and then he says, I told you that was going to happen. So did he, did he actually tell him? And he was like, no, that's a, that's a bad idea. Um, you I don't know, you're going to fall down. I don't know what he actually told him, or if he just said in passing, uh, that's too big over top or something, or did he actually tell him, don't pull it that hard, don't take that big a top, don't be just on your lanyard, have a backup point. I don't know what he told him, but I told him, man, <laughs> told you that was going to happen. That's a classic line. It just makes sure, he's, it makes sure he's okay first, and then he tells him that. He pulled way too hard in that. So, one, they were, like, as soon as they know he's okay, they're telling him, you pulled way too hard on that. Um... So he pulled too hard, he told him it was going to happen, and it all still went wrong anyway. And I think, if we just go back there, actually, I don't think the guy is wearing a helmet. If you look, at it, it's a bit small and grainy, but it doesn't appear like he's wearing a helmet. So I don't know what kind of cowboy outfit these guys are working with here, but only a lanyard on, no means to the ground from like his main line rescue line um and you know we always say like have a where well, you need two points of attachment that would stop this happening you need a a means to the ground which is your main climbing line which if you're climbing a tree if you're an arborist you're a tree climber you should always have a main climbing line because for one well normally it's your the system that you're climbing on but two, on a spar pole, it's your your emergency rescue line to the ground if something goes to happen. If something was to happen, like you, know, you get attacked by bees, you need a quick, quick way down to the ground. Or um, you cut yourself and you need to be rescued, then your, your rescuers 
need to be able to get you to the ground and it's so much easier if you're already got a line installed like there's so many different scenarios where you need a rescue like uh, your main line as a means to get into the ground um, yeah so let's play on a bit there all right um, so what industry so I'm just gonna I so I made a video on Sparple tines um, using cinching tine points and so basically this is like a section of that video and what what I explain is that you whenever you're on a Sparple you need a cinching tying system which means it cinches around the trunk so in case of a fall like the rope is going to grab around the trunk you might fall like one or two feet but your rope will grab around the trunk and it will stop you falling to the ground just as that guy did in the video now if you don't use a cinching tying system so the only way not to do that is if you're climbing on like um on a moving rope system and you don't use any kind of friction saver and you just have your rope going round from you know one side to the other and it it doesn't cinch it's just kind of looped around um and you so you still have the ability to be able to fall all the way down the trunk on that system so i'm going to show you in these few clips um from my previous spa pole time video um in more detail practices say is that you should always use a choking off system like a tying method so what that means is if you're climbing a stationary rope system you've got a few options you've got um, most common is just tie a running bowline so I've got here a running bowline with a Yosemite tie off a second method would be use something like a quickie connect the quickie direct to the eye and around the rope and then you've just got a choked off system using the quickie so that's so the way that they, so that is it for um, your stationary rope system tines. Well, that's two. That's two ways you can do it anyway. And then on this one, we come to this is like the if you're climbing on a moving rope system or double rope system, whatever you want to call it. Um, so here you've got a friction saver. On this one, I'm actually using what's called a tree squeeze by Buckingham, which is probably about 15 feet long it's rigid like a bit like a, a lanyard like a steel core it's not steel core but it's rigid so it, it's easier to like flip around the trunk and this is way longer than a usual um, friction saver because I, I always use an, an adjustable friction saver um, and that's good for you know like small size spar poles but when you get into big stuff like the the one that I'm climbing on here, then you need something larger, and um, this is this is what I have, so this works perfectly. If you want to climb on that traditional moving rope system that a lot of people might be used to, um, and the way that this works is that you just adjust it so the the two rings don't quite meet each other, pass your rope through, and then in terms of a fall that will like grab around the trunk which I show you in this video here this works is you adjust the small ring so that it's just shorter than being able to touch the large ring and that means that when you put your weight into the rope we see we nearly we nearly needed it for a second there when you put your weight into the rope It cinches around the trunk so if you were to take a fall it's gonna cinch around the trunk and you know you're, you're gonna fall a few feet and like I said before it you, you might fall a few feet but it's gonna save some broken bones and scrapes and face plants and all that kind of stuff so um, industry best practices you use a cinching system whether it be on a moving rope or a single rope or stationary rope system okay so just before we watch this one last time um, yeah so let's let's look again at everything that goes wrong and this is just like this just shows you the value of 
good communication. So hopefully if you use like a center headset or something like that, good communication between the crew and the climber. So the climber says, I'm taking this huge top for whatever reason, if you can, you know, you might be in a, a location where you can take a huge top. I'm going to take this huge top. I've got a pull line on it for safety, but it's fairly straight up. So you just need a bit of tension. You don't need to be cranking on it like a, like a crazy person. So you need to communicate that well because as the climber, you you know the best about how things are going to react, uh, about how it feels up there. When you're on the ground, your feet are safely on terra firma, and you 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 have you don't have that that fear in your body that like that little anxious moment. You you don't you're not feeling any of that. So you can pull as hard as you like because you're not worried about going for a ride or falling down the trunk. So. As a climber, you need to be in charge. You need to say, right, let's put a bit of tension on this, but don't be crazy because it's not got like a huge back lean or anything like that. Um, next, as the climber, always use a cinch and tying system. This just shows what can happen if you don't. Secondly, as a climber, always have a second point of attachment because one, this same, this could happen to you, and the second point is another backup of like stopping you from falling down the trunk secondly if you cut through your lanyard if that's the only point of attachment then you're going for a ride and it could be fatal could be disastrous um as the groundsman don't don't be just like i told you so you want to be the person that if you know something's going to happen or if there's a good chance it'll happen and it's going to be a terrible outcome then you should say, hang on a minute, let's reassess. This is craziness. Um, I don't want you to get injured. Like that guy who said, I told you that was going to happen. He could have quite easily been scooping up a body off the floor and you wouldn't be laughing and joking about it now. Luckily, you can be laughing and joking. And I'm sure you're going to be telling that story for the rest of your life to your grandkids, all that kind of stuff. It's funny. You'll be showing them the video clip. Everybody is going to be having a laugh around, you know, birthdays holidays all that kind of stuff but like don't be that guy who could be scooping up your colleague off the floor um anyway here you go one last time there you go thanks for watching appreciate it um be safe don't let that happen to you or your colleagues see you on the next video bye